our samples were spiked. Ronnie knew it, so we didn't know which one. Was oh, spiked. so you blinded yourself. Yep. I was very fortunate to be introduced to this field and introduced to this team when I was very young as a graduate student here at Colorado State. Um, I, I, I was attracted to the fact that there were so many faculty members working on different areas of the disease, ranging from immunology to bacterial physiology to molecular genetics and really pushing the field and was fortunate to be able to graduate in that atmosphere. Um, I returned to Colorado State University after having been at several very um, premier research institutes because I was very much aware of the specialized niche that we have here in the team of scientists that we get to work with. Our part, the laboratory's small part in this, is that um, we began working in proteomic mass spectrometry many, many years ago and under the direction of um, John Belisle when I was a student. And so when, when we returned, when I returned and we began to develop a lab, um, we continued to sort of use mass spectrometry to complement the research programs here. Um, that's what I would say is slight, slightly unique, that we heavily use that type of instrumentation to really look at the proteins of mycobacterium tuberculosis in different environments. We use mass spectrometry and proteomic analysis to try to identify biomarkers of specific manifestations of disease. One of the projects recently funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation includes um, elucidating novel M. tuberculosis specific biomarkers on circulating exosomes from MTB infected patients. And what we're hoping is that this will allow for diagnosis of latently infected individuals by screening their sera. Obviously, replicate A was your wild type. What continues to engage me in mycobacterial research is it continues to touch me. I had the opportunity to, to see TB and MDR TB patients at a recent visit on the East Coast, actually, here in America. And as recent as a few years ago, um, unfortunately, I had the opportunity to help one of my good friends have a mycobacterial illness as a result of being immunocompromised with non Hodgkin's lymphoma. And so I sort of feel like if at any time in my life I'm, I'm thinking that maybe there's another infectious disease that, that I can dedicate my energy to, um, what seems to happen is that this disease has a personal effect um, such that I know that it's important for us to continue to work on it. And tuberculosis has been historically a problem for hundreds of years and to think that it's something that will be solved in the next hundred, of, hundred years is, is a bit naive. However, to have an impact on that would of course be our goal and our number one goal. But we're also equally aware that because this disease has continued to be present in communities, um, and we now have MDR and XDR TB merging, that it's also equally important for us to train the next generation of scientists so that as they continue to ma mature through their professional development, they can um, feel confident that however they apply these skills, that they have the tools to do it with rigor and with reproducibility so that they can really make an impact um, on public health in general.